Okay, these are the models that have to do with digestion. This is the pancreas model. This structure here is the pancreas. This is the pancreatic duct. Um, the pancreas is an endocrine gland and an exocrine gland. So the endocrine system, it, we learned that it made insulin and glucagon. And in the digestive system, it's going to make digestive enzymes that go into this duct here, and it empties into the duodenum here. So this is the duodenum right here. Um, we want to look at the liver here. The liver would be really large if it were here, but this is the gallbladder. This is the cystic duct here. The liver is going to make bile, and it's going to put that bile into this common hepatic duct. This is the common hepatic duct. Where the common hepatic duct and the cystic duct join, that makes the common bile duct. So here's part of the common bile duct here, and it goes behind the pancreas here, and you see the rest of it come out here. And you see that it empties into this little hole right here. It's called the major duodenal papillae, along with this, these pancreatic enzymes coming through here. So let me go over that again. This is the gallbladder. This is the cystic duct right here. This is the cystic duct. This is the common hepatic duct because it's going to have bile from the two lobes of the liver. Where the common hepatic duct and the, and the cystic duct join together, this makes the common bile duct. So part of it is here, part of it goes behind the, behind the pancreas, and it goes right down here and empties into the major duodenal papillae with some of the enzymes from the pancreatic duct. Okay, this opening right up here is the minor duodenal papillae, and only some of the digestive enzymes are going to be able to empty into that. So here you have your major duodenal papillae down here. Um, the sphincter that opens and closes the major duodenal papillae is called the sphincter of Audi and it is relaxed by cholecystokinin. We'll, we'll talk about that in lecture. But this is, you, it will be closed whenever you're not eating so that enzymes do not get um, taken to the duodenum for digestion if there's no food there. This is the minor duodenal papillae here. This is the duodenum, and I believe that's everything on this model. Okay, so let's look at the stomach. The stomach, um, the food goes into the stomach through the esophagus, and this side here is the duodenum. So we have the esophagus and the duodenum, so that we enter and leave. This is the curve between the esophagus and duodenum, it's the small curve. It's going to have quite a bit of connective tissue, so you don't have stretching of the stomach in this area. This is your um, lesser curvature. This is the lesser curvature. Here we come around, and this is the greater curvature. You have stretchier material, stretchier tissue here, so if you overeat, your stomach grows, and it's going to get larger and larger in this direction. Open up the stomach, and you're going to see that you have a sphincter whenever food enters the stomach, and you have a sphincter when food leaves the stomach. This is the sphincter here. This is close to the esophagus, so it's called the lower esophageal sphincter, and it's also known as the cardiac sphincter. Notice that food comes here and is taken into the stomach. So if you if you kind of draw like a flat line here, you notice that part of the stomach is above the area of where the food would enter the stomach, and this is called the fundus. Okay, so this is the fundus. This is the cardiac sphincter. This area of the stomach here is called the cardiac region. This is the body of the stomach, the main major portion of the organ. This is the pyloric region. And if I rotate it this way, you can see how this is um, a sphincter here. This is called the pyloric sphincter before food goes into the duodenum. Okay, you have these um, folds on the inside of the stomach. Those folds, whenever you eat, are going to unfold so that your stomach is not actually stretchy. It's just unfolding whenever you eat food. Those folds are called rugae. And if you look, notice that, remember that this was this way. If we open that up and you see these little blue cells like this right here, those are called, that's the location of, um, that's the location of the parietal cells. And parietal cells secrete intrinsic factor. And if you remember, intrinsic factor is needed for the absorption of vitamin B12. So let's go over this um, model one more time. It's the stomach model. This is the esophagus and this is the duodenum. This is the minor, um, not minor duodenal papillae, sorry. Um, this is the lesser curvature. This is the greater curvature. If you open the stomach up, 
you have the sphincters that are going to control the food going in or out of the stomach. This is the lower esophageal sphincter, also known as the cardiac sphincter. And if you draw your straight line here, you notice that part of the stomach comes above that opening and that's the fundus. This is the cardiac region, this is the pyloric region, and this is the pyloric sphincter. The folds inside of the, of, inside of the stomach are called rugae. And this blue area here represents the location of um, intrinsic cells, and um, not intrinsic cells, sorry, um, parietal cells. And the parietal cells secrete intrinsic factor. An intrinsic factor is needed for the absorption of vitamin B12. Okay, so let's move over to our torso model. Here we have our torso model. On the outside here, we have our teeth. And here you have the gums called gingiva. Um, so you have teeth and gingiva. You have the submandibular gland, sublingual gland, and parotid glands. Those are three salivary glands. So here you have the submandibular gland. This is also the submandibular gland. Come up here and look at the top part. This is a submandibular gland and this is a sublingual gland. So um, those glands are all uh, salivary glands. They're all controlled by your facial nerve. This little, sir, this little white thing right here is the sublingual duct. Remember that they are exocrine glands, so they're going to put their secretions into a duct. Um, turn it around here to look on the lateral side of the head, and we're going to see the parotid gland here. This is the parotid gland, and this is the parotid duct, which is taking saliva to the mouth. Okay, we look at, everything else is kind of lower here. So let's remove our lungs. Not everything's lower. Let's go back up. <laughs> kind of stretch back up. And here we have, this is the trachea, and this is the esophagus. So the, remember, the esophagus is posterior to the trachea. So here we come down, and we look at, here's the liver. We're going to go over the liver in just a minute. So I'm going to put, put it down here in the front. Uh, this is the stomach. We just went over the stomach model. To go, to go really fast, this is the um, where the esophagus empties into the stomach. This is the duodenum. This is the lesser curvature. This way over here is the greater curvature. This is the fundus of the stomach. Open it up and you see the folds of the stomach. Those are the rugae. This would be the um, cardiac sphincter and this is the cardiac region. This is the pyloric sphincter and this is the pyloric, sphinc pyloric region. Okay, that's the stomach. So the pancreas, here's the pancreas. Here is the pancreatic duct. See, remove that just for a minute. This is the pancreatic duct, and the pancreatic duct empties into the major duodenal papilla. You see it, just a part of it, right there inside of the duodenum. On the small intestines, this whole structure here is the small intestines. I can remove part of it. The first part of the small intestines is the duodenum. So this is the part where the stomach met. Let me put this back up here. So this is where the stomach comes in and it goes into the duodenum. All of this right here is considered the duodenum. Um, the last part of the small intestines is the ileum. This is the ileum here going into the large intestines. Okay, the first part of the large intestines is the cecum. This is the cecum here. If you notice that food goes from the ileum into the cecum, the cecum is called a blind pouch. So if food comes down into the cecum, it has to turn around and come back up. This is the appendix here. This is the ascending colon. Let me get my other part. This is the transverse colon. This is the descending colon. From the descending colon, material goes into this S-shaped curve called the sigmoid colon, and then it goes to this straight part right here called the rectum. Okay, whenever we look at the curves, you have your ascending colon, goes to your transverse colon. This curve over here is next to where the liver is. That's called the hepatic flexure. You see your transverse colon comes here, and it's going to have a big angle to go to your descending colon, so this is the um, splenic flexure here. So on, your, on this model, you have your pancreas, pancreatic duct. This is all the duodenum here. The pancreatic duct empties into the greater duodenal papillae. From the small intestines, food goes from the ileum to the cecum. This sphincter between the ileum and the cecum is the ileocecal sphincter. This is the cecum. This is the appendix. 
This is the ascending colon. The curve here is called the transverse, I mean, is the, um, is the hepatic flexure. Then this is the transverse colon. The angle between the transverse colon and the descending colon is the splenic flexure. This is the descending colon. This descending colon leads into the, um, now I'm not going to talk good, sigmoid colon, the S-shaped curve, the sigmoid colon, and then the straighter area right here is the rectum. So that's everything on the torso model. So let's go over. Let's go over to the liver model. So this is the liver from the torso. This is the falciform ligament here. Remember that you have a left lobe and a right lobe of the, li of the liver? This is the falciform ligament. Turn it over. This is the round ligament. This is the gallbladder. And the ducts that are associated with the bile, this is the hepatic duct here. It's going to drain the bile from the liver. This is the cystic duct here. And the cystic duct and, and, and common hepatic duct are going to join together to make this structure right here is kind of cut off, but this is the common bile duct. So we have the common hepatic duct, the cystic duct, and the common bile duct. Can we see that good? Okay. All right, let's go back over here to this one. Okay, this is the digestive system model. We have the teeth here, and the gums, the gingiva, hold the teeth in. Here we have the hard palate, and the soft palate has the muscle behind it. This is the uvula that comes down at the back of the throat. You have your lingual tonsils. These are the lingual tonsils here underneath the tongue. The palaton tonsils, since this is the palate, the palaton tonsils are right here at the end of it. Those are the ones that you normally see on the lateral side of the oral cavity if somebody um, wants to look at your tonsils. And these up here are the pharyngeal tonsils in the pharynx. Okay, so we have pharyngeal tonsils, palaton tonsils, um, lingual tonsils. Okay. This right here is the trachea, and you can follow this down, and that's the esophagus. This is the esophagus. It's leading into the stomach. This on the stomach is the um, lesser curvature. This is the greater curvature. The folds in the stomach are called rugae. You have this the sphincter muscle here called the lower esophageal sphincter or the cardiac sphincter. And you can see if you put um, your finger here, you can see that you have part of the stomach rising above the entrance of the food. And so this is the fundus of the stomach. This is the cardiac region of the stomach. This is the pyloric region of the stomach. And this is the pyloric sphincter. The pyloric sphincter allows food to go into the duodenum just a couple of tablespoons at a time. It's like one tablespoon every 20 seconds. So let's look underneath the liver here. I think we'll down just a little bit. This is the liver here. This is the gallbladder. Is that a good angle? Yeah. Okay, this is the gallbladder. This is the cystic duct here. The cystic duct is going to meet in with the common hepatic duct and the common hepatic duct and the cystic duct join to make the common bile duct. So this green line here is the common bile duct and it should come out down here in your duodenum. I just can't see that angle right now. Do you see it? Okay. Okay, let's raise it back up. Okay, this is the common um, bile duct right here. Emptying into um, the major duodenal papillae along with the pancreatic duct. Okay, so this whole thing here is the pancreatic duct. This is the pancreas. This is the duodenum. This is all of the small intestines. There are three parts of the small intestines. The duodenum's here. The jejunum is mixed in here. And the ileum is this last part of the small intestines. The ileum comes into the large intestines. The first part of the large intestines is the cecum. This is the cecum here. The sphincter between the ileum and the cecum are the, is the ileocecal sphincter. This is the appendix. This is the ascending colon. The transverse colon would be here. This is, see where the liver is over here and you have this angle. So this is the hepatic flexure. 
you have your transverse colon, this is the spleen, and so the angle over here next to the spleen is the splenic flexure. This is the descending colon. It comes around, you see that it, it makes an angle towards the posterior side on this one, so that's the sigmoid colon. The straight part here is the rectum.